Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on Cobblers Vlogs where today I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by 1516 uh, title winner with the Cobblers, Lawson Diath. Um, how are you mate, how are you getting on? Yeah, good thank you, um, just making the most out of this. Happy that I can play golf now so it gets me on the house for a bit. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Um, and you're at uh, Yeovil now aren't you, so you were going for promotion and it's not, um, not quite happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, just waiting to hear if, if what they're going to do with regards to that sort of thing. Um, hopefully, they give us a chance to at least try and get promoted because it'd be a shame to just cut it short, um, which I don't think is fair on all the other clubs that can get promoted as well. Same in all the other leagues, I think. Yeah. Okay. So um, moving on into your time at the Cobblers, before we get into the title winning season, you signed the season before in the um, fourteen fifteen season. Um, how did that move come about? How did you get interest from Wilder? Uh, yeah, so I'd, I'd been released from Reading and uh, was struggling for a club, really. Um, and then Wilder ran my agent. Uh, they had a conversation and he said, I'd just come down for the Eastley game and we'll have a look. Uh, and then I, um, I managed to do quite well, so just went from there after. Fair enough. And in your debut, you obviously played it was in the League Cup uh, against Wolves at Molyneux. Um, the quite comfortable win in the end. Um, you scored twice on your debut. What was that like playing at Molyneux? Yeah, it was unreal. A bit surreal moment, really. Um, everything seemed to go my way. <laughs> um, and it just gave me the confidence, really, to, to go from there and, and do well for the club. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so, first season wasn't the best. It was sort of a mid-table finish. Um, but then the second season yeah. after that was something special. You went on to... Uh, win the league, absolutely walked the league as well um, with a great squad. Um, but it was overshadowed by nearly losing the club, um, not being paid, um, sort of some sort of financial issue going on in the background uh, with the East Stand. Um, Kelvin Thomas eventually came in and took over. But before that, when it was still with Cardo's, what was it like not being paid? Did you have to, um, were you close to walking away at any point? Not really, because it, it was, I think what, we have a month, I think it was, of not being paid. I think yeah. something like that and it didn't, never got to that point where it got do you know what I mean there was always talks of something going on in the background maybe and, and so we were hopeful and then it never got to that point where you had to think about what was going to happen um, but for going back to that time that Coventry game we played in the FA Cup I think that was around the same yeah. time that year and um, we won 2-1 and the crowd I think we took like 2,000 fans I think it was something like that the fans were unbelievable and it was just that game and Wilder made a speech to all the lads um, before the game and it just it sort of just I just felt like it galvanised the whole team and really gave us that energy and, and from then on I, I feel like we didn't look back as a team and we just kept going You mentioned um, Wilder and his speech did you ever or were you ever aware of that game at Notts County I think it was in about December where he um, came out to the radio and made him had a massive speech. What was that like? When did you first hear about that? Was it on Twitter or? Yeah, I saw I saw I saw it on I think Twitter or something like that or YouTube yeah. or whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, it was class, wasn't it? Um, yeah. It's yeah, it just and I, and I think that season people forget from from that season after after Christmas or around about Christmas from Christmas time, we were unbelievable from from that our record was ridiculous like we couldn't yeah. even made playoffs compared to where we were as well um, I think we only lost like three or four games that half of the season um, so, so people forget that so really we went from December there all the way through that half of the season into the next season with if you look at the record it's a really good run Mm -hmm. And there was that um, as we went into the League One season, it was like a thirty-one game undefeated streak. Um, I think we and then went on carried something on like that. Yeah, 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 carried on to League One. So mm -hmm. it's speaking, really ridiculous. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> speaking of um, Wilder, what was it like working under him and Neil in their training sessions? What were they like? Yeah, they were class. Like Wilder has that um, sort of old school, but mixed it in. Sort of just knew how to get it right with your and how he how he spoke to you and you had that fear factor with him as well like so you didn't want to upset him um and nearly was class with me as well he, he really really um we did a lot of anal analyst stuff with with him while to come in as well um but we really went into detail of it and i learned a lot loads actually 
couldn't have asked for a better Definitely. manager and assistant manager, to be fair, um, for my first sort of real club. Would you say they were the probably the um, the most influential sort of coaching staff or on your on your career and your development? You know, I've, I've been quite lucky. Uh, I'd say at each stage, is, I've had each stage of my career, I've had really good managers. And even when I was in youth team at Reading and even in the first team at Reading, even though I didn't quite break through there, it was, um, I've had really good people, um, managers, coaches. way through my career so yeah um so um moving on to um the games in that season there was a lot of memorable games a lot of away days and obviously the um eventually lifting the title at home to Luton in the end um what were some of your favorite games that you played in some of the favorite goals that you scored um during that season oh i don't know there was so many um we had the, the Stevenage game where we come back away 1-3-2. That game stands out. Obviously, the Coventry game that I said about stands out. That was in the FA Cup. Um, in the league, I'm trying to think. There were so many games, I thought. Like the Oxford yeah. games, home and at home, we were 10 men most of the game, won one nil. Um, even the away leg, like there was a lot riding on it in the away leg. Um, and we won that one. Yeah, there was, there was so many games, to be fair. We had goals. I remember Leighton Orient away as well, when we won 4-1. Every goal seemed to be a worldie. Ricky yeah, Anderson, that was it. Unbelievable, um, yeah. Rodney <laughs> McDonald's goal was ridiculous as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I listened to a um, podcast the other day that had, um, it was a Cobblers like, fans podcast that had Ricky Holmes on it. And uh, he mm -hmm. was talking about the... Um, how tight the group was and how you were like a group of men and you were you spent most of the time drinking and he mentioned about um flip flop Thursdays. What um what was that all about? <laughs> uh, I can't really remember it to be honest. <laughs> uh, it's a lot a lot went on to be fair <laughs> that season because obviously towards the end we were pretty much done, weren't we? we were quite a long time. We had we had some really good good party and that with the lads and and stuff and it was memories that you'll take take with us for this but yeah that no, was really good the lads all the lads we got on really well um and also for me it was so good because i had a lot of lads in their peak yeah. playing with them like and i'm just sort of learning my way still and um to be to playing with all of them like was um it just made my life a lot easier was there anyone um, in particular that you got on with um, better than others or like sort of best mates that you've stayed in touch with? Uh, Chris Ackett, um, oh, yeah. he really, we, we used to drive in together from Oxford. So um, it, me and him, yeah, we got on really well. We still, he lives, we live in the same sort of area. So it's easy to speak to him. Um, and then all the lads like just touch base now and then see how they're doing sort of thing. Um, I'm a lot younger than them, than them, so <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, so it's difficult as well. Obviously, moving away and different, everyone's at different places and stuff. But it'd be nice to to everyone to maybe get back together at some point. Yeah. Um, finally, on teammates, um, things that everybody wants to know: worst dress sense, um, music taste, those sort of things. Who uh, who who had the worst in the dressing room? Nicky Adams definitely worst worst dress sense, I think. Uh I can't remember. John Joe was up there actually. Oh, it might have been John Joe. John Joe or Nicky, one of them. <laughs> um, and music. Music. I don't know, it's a hard one really. I don't I, we didn't really apart from the music before the games, we didn't we didn't really have it blaring out. Like most of the time lads were having banter and trying to get each other fine so we had more money for the Christmas do and stuff like that <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah there's a lot of pranks going on obviously Adam Morton takes up most of our time as well yeah a lot of pranks going on in 
Um, yeah. He kept our morale going, going a lot. He was a good laugh. Loved him. And then um, let's bring you to the final day of that season. The um, well, not the final day, the day you won the league. Um, when you it was a nil-nil draw to Exeter, and you had to wait a couple of minutes to find out um, that you won the league. What was it like um, waiting to find out? And then obviously you hear the fans, um, you know, cheering, but the players are a bit like, oh, not yet. Um, what what was that like? Just the whole emotion and that whole day. Talk us through it. Yeah, you know what? It, it's I can't really. It was like so many emotions going involved that I can't really remember. Like, I just remember the game. I can't really remember the game, to be honest. I just, <laughs> it was just, it was a boring game as well. It was an awful game, yeah. Yeah, and uh, just, yeah, it just all happened. Like, it was just, sort of, you're just not really it, it, with it, do you know what I mean, if that makes sense? Yeah. Um, yeah, that, but when, obviously, when we found out and then the fans were on the pitch and picking us up and that, um, that was quality. I remember that sort of bit, but we were waiting a bit before. I can't remember. Like it's all just a blur, really. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. And then eventually that Luton came came, and you got your hands in the trophy. Um, what do you remember about that? I think we um, we beat them as well, didn't we? Quite um, quite comfortably. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it was just a just a lovely day to enjoy. Really, um, just a party, wasn't it? Really, it was. The football went well as well, and, and the after bit it was something that you always remember. Um, you wish you could do it again, to be honest. Did you? Um, what did you do to celebrate afterwards? If you can, uh, if you can remember. I think we all just went out in Northampton. I think I'm not. I can't even remember. Uh, yeah, we just went out into North into town um, in Northampton. Um, I think I don't know where we went. We were probably load of different places. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. And then um, moving on, um, the season afterwards, you were still um, at the club. You left in January, and that was when uh, Wilder left, and it was um, Rob Page who came in to replace him. Yeah. Was it an injury, or why? Why weren't you? Um, why didn't we see you as much in the next uh, the next year? Uh, yeah, I was. I don't know really what what was happening because um, I played every preseason game. Done well preseason, in my opinion, as well. Um, and then just whatever reason, first game of the season, he, he left. I had a slight knock, to be fair, but he, I was fit. I said, "Look, I'm fine." Yeah. Like, but um, actually, no, I didn't have a slight knock. Sorry, I was fully fit. Um, and he, he left me. He left me out. He said, "You'll be on the bench." Blah blah. blah. And then Charlton away was when it started really properly. Um, where I had a slight knock, but I said I was fully fit, and then he left me out of the squad. Um, and then that was it, really. We just, we sort of, yeah. I, I, was, I was doing everything I could. I was running every day. Um, I think Luton got to see that side because I kept myself really fit. I trained honest and hard every day. Um, I wanted to stay at Northampton, uh, but obviously he wanted rid of me. Um, is what it is. Uh, <laughs> if I'd have stayed a week later, I'd have been able to stay. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was what it was. I think Luton got to see that side of me keep staying fit uh, in that time, and um, I've done I've done really well when I was when I was asked to play for Luton that season. Um, I was fit and ready, so I think if if I, and it was frustrating at Northampton that year because I felt like I I was good enough to play in that that team. Um, so you then went to Luton. What was the um, that was back in League Two? They were back in League Two at the time as well, I think, weren't they? So what was yeah. the um, sort of difference there? What um, sort of team were you playing in? Uh, so, so Nathan Jones. It was more of um, he sort of played probably more passing football um, with a diamond, a bit more fluid. Sort of, I don't know. Actually, no, we were fluid in the Northampton team, um, but it was a bit more. Um, pass out from the back that sort of working movements whereas we did pass out from the back at Northampton but it was wild I used to call it a no no wrist zone like only if it's yeah. on sort of thing um, it was just two ways different ways of playing and really enjoyed them really enjoyed that that part way of playing as well and, and learning off of Nathan Jones um, which is also another very good manager and then you um, moved on to the MK Dons, didn't you, after that? And uh, did you get a promotion there? Yeah, yeah, promotion there. Um, 
I had a promotion at Luton as well. Um, unfortunately, injuries in the last two years have, have like, stopped me from playing as much as I would like to. Have. Um, so, yeah, it's been unfortunate, but also two promotions with them two clubs as well. So it was, yeah. it was good to be involved in. Um, it's just a shame. Just glad I couldn't... <clears throat> sorry, my throat's going. Yeah, uh, glad I couldn't play more. So I need some more. Cool. What were the um, what was the sort of um, difference between sort of the two teams? Obviously, you had two completely different teams in Luton and MK Dons. How were they different to when you got promoted with us? Uh, well, I was more involved with the Northampton because I was fully fit the whole time. I mean, I had a month. I missed a month. I think it was in February or January. No, January it was in Northampton. Um, and that was it. So like, I, was, I, played, I was involved in every game at Northampton. Whereas Luton, the promotion that year, I, need, I think I made like 10 appearances. Um, I had two, two quite bad injuries. It took up most of the season. Uh, and then Milton Keynes, I, got, I didn't have a pre-season. I had a little strain and then come back and then got injured. It was out for six weeks. And then just saw I didn't really, then I just didn't really maybe fit into that squad, how I played and that. Um, but also didn't get off to the best of start to try and get in there, cement my place, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then you, um, you're now at Yeovil, you were released by uh, MK at the end of last season, I believe, and you're now at um, Yeovil playing in the um, National League. Um, mm-hmm. It's never really something I've uh, seen or watched before, so what, what's the sort of difference to, in terms of like, the way the clubs have run, the professionalism? Obviously, Yeovil were relegated last year. What's the difference in terms of like, quality, players you're up against, all that sort of stuff? Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a mix and match. You get sort of, you get lead to standard and then you get not lead to standard. Um, so you get like a bit of bit of both with the teams that you play. Um, but it's better than most people would think, I'd probably say. Um, you just have some games where it's, it's um, you play against teams that it's almost like you, you should be beating them, but then it's a tight game and it's, yeah. just, it's a weird, weird league. It's very weird. Um, but yeah, no, it's still enjoyable and uh, it's still tough. It's very tough. I'd, I'd, it's a tough place to go and play football when you go to teams that have got 3G pitches, for example, and, and stuff like that and not used to playing it. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So that's um, pretty much everything I wanted to ask you. We'll move on to uh, some questions we've got from the viewers. We've got quite a few, so we'll probably only do um, two or three. Um, first of all, we've got James who asks, um, was it a kick in the teeth um, to see so many of the title winners leave at the end of that season and then you were, you were still there? What was it like seeing that sort of squad sort of disappear, I guess? Yeah, um, it was it was tough because obviously we had such a good year and it was like obviously the man Wilder and nearly off and then a few of the players went, but we still had a fair few of us there to sort of carry on the momentum. When I think if we'd have added in a few players to fit around that group that were already there, then and we would have. I think we would have done pretty well and then added again say in January or something like that or the next following next season and we'd have been able to build and I think we'd have been a really good team in League One um, but it wasn't to be with uh, with sort of some players that we brought in maybe um, and uh, yeah so I'll just stop talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> well the next one um, asks about the title team again uh, it's from Ben who says mm. Um, how far would the title team have gone if they'd have stayed together in League One with Wilder as the manager as well? Oh, I'd, uh, I generally think we would have been in and around it fighting for promotion. But in League One, I could yeah. be wrong. Like, yeah, I, I, I think we would, personally. Like the team we had, the morale, we would have, Wilder would have added players again and we would have gone again. Um, and the attitude and, and desire that every player had in that team, like we all, it just compl- it, uh, it just all sort of, it was like a jigsaw puzzle and it all fell into place. Like everyone just sort of clicked in their own way of doing it. And um, yeah, it would, I think we'd have done really well. 
Cool. And then uh, just finally from uh, our viewers, we've got one from Adam who asks, pretty obvious answer, I think. Did you enjoy your time um, with the Cobblers? Yeah, I loved it. Um, it was a club club that would always remain in my heart. Um, I always look out for the results. Uh, they, they give me my opportunity to um, uh, showcase myself um, in professional football. Um, and it's, yeah, I, just, I owe a lot to Northampton and um, I'd always, always be looking out. Cool. And then um, just finally from me, um, obviously lockdown, you can't play football at the minute. You're obviously uh, doing your best to obviously keep fit at home, I assume. What sort of things are you doing around the house to keep yourself busy, both um, in a footballing sense to keep fit and uh, just to entertain yeah. yourself? Yeah, just been doing like strengthening work and stuff like that and some running and stuff and then sort of trying to sort of do some keepy ups and that just to keep a little touch of the ball because you can't, there's nowhere really to go and do stuff. Um, obviously with having to keep self-isolated and that. Um, and then I've been playing a Call of Duty Warzone. Oh yeah. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's been keeping me occupied, getting very angry because I'm so bad. <laughs> Yeah, I, I um I decided to play uh, foot champs on FIFA at the weekend, and that just uh, didn't go well I at did, all. Yeah. I, you know, no, I got uh, got silver one, not good. <laughs> but then my <laughs> team's not that great either, so I'm just not very good at the game. But yeah, um, yeah. thanks very much for talking to us. Really appreciate you uh, coming on and speaking to us. And uh, make sure you uh, leave a like on the video if you have enjoyed it. Hopefully, we'll try and get some more ex cobblers on soon as well. Hit the subscribe button if you're new. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye bye.